In this video, we're gonna take a look at Excel tables. So Excel tables are essentially containers for your data. So if you have data, you're gonna to wanna to put them into a container. So I've got this set of data here, and right now the only way we can kind of tell that this is all one data set is because it's all together in the sheet. So if I were to come along and maybe insert a column, then does this data here have anything to do with this data here? I don't know. So I'm just going to delete that. But when our data is in a table, it becomes really obvious that things are all one set of data. So we can turn any set of data into a table by going up to the Insert tab and going to this Table command here. If we press that, it's going to bring up this Create Table command and we can select our data that we want to include in our table. Right now it's already selected the data, so Excel guesses where my data is. I can just scroll around and make sure that it's correct, so that green line goes all the way to the end. That looks good. And then this option here, my table has headers. We're going to leave that checked because the first row in our data, so this row here, has column headers, so you can see that uh, the first row indicates what the data below it is. So here I've got an ID column, and you can see uh, an ID down this column. Here I've got a gender column, and then you can see male and female. Here I've got an age column, and you can see the person's age, etc. So when you have column headers, you're going to want to make sure that this is checked. And we can press OK, and we get an Excel table. So our data is now contained in this Excel table. And it's pretty obvious that it's a table because we get some special formatting. And when you're inside a table, your active cell cursor is inside a table, you get a new ribbon tab as well. So this Table Tools Design tab appears when you're inside the ribbon or when you're inside the table. So if I take my active cell cursor outside, you can see it disappears. And when I put it back in, it reappears. And after making a table, the first thing you should do is give your table a name. So in the Table Tools Design tab, there's this section here, Table Name. And you can see that I've got Table 1 right now. And so if I'm ever referring to uh, data inside this table, it's going to be referred to as Table 1. So I want to give it a sensible name so I can just come in here and type out a new name. So I'm just going to call this HR underscore data. So you can only use letters, numbers, and an underscore character to name your table. And you have to start it with a letter or an underscore. You can't start it with a number. And there's a limit to how many characters you can use. So you can only use 255 characters, but I would really suggest that you keep it short. And of course, if you have multiple tables in a workbook, they each have to have a unique name. So I wouldn't be able to create another table and name it HR underscore data in this case. Now, once you get your table named, there's a couple other things you can do. So in the Table Tools Design tab, there's some interesting options here about style. So you can remove the header row. Uh, you can remove banded rows, so a little visual uh, differentiation between the rows. You can add bold uh, font to the first column or the last column. And you can add banded columns, but if you have banded rows, then adding banded columns kind of makes it a bit messier, so I like to leave that off. And you can add or remove these filter buttons. So these filter buttons here allow you to filter, sort and filter your data. You can remove those or add them back in. And there's another option here for the total row. So if I click on this, I get this nice row down here. And you can see here that I've got a total of all these monthly salaries down here. And there's a little drop down handle so we can remove totals from our total row. Or we can actually summarize it in different ways. So we can add an average here or count. 
or just count the numbers or take the max or min or sum or standard deviation or variance. And we can also add some more functions if we want to. So you can do that for uh, any column with numbers in them. One of the other great features of tables is, as you can see, I've scrolled down uh, in the sheet. So if I'm at the top here, you can see my column headers for this table. But when I scroll down, notice that the column headers remain there. So instead of my uh, columns of letters here that I regularly see in Excel, I can actually see the column heading names for my table. So that's a pretty cool feature of tables. The other thing we can do is up in the table tools design tab, there's options here for different styles. So uh, right now uh, it was just the default style that my uh, table came with. But there's a whole load of uh, different themes here. So there's light themes, medium themes, and dark themes. And you can also create your own table styles if you want to. There's also a couple handy ways to select data in a table that you don't get with other uh, with data outside of a table. So when I uh, use my mouse cursor, if I scroll, if I hover just above the column heading, my arrow, my cursor turns into this small black arrow. And when I click, I select the whole column. And if I click again, I select the whole column, including the column heading. I can do that with the corner up here too. If I select that, it's going to select the whole table. I can also do that with uh, rows. So when I come over here on the left hand side, I can click there and I can select the whole row easily. Now if I scroll down to the bottom, another interesting thing about tables is when you're at the last cell here, if you want to add new data and you've got your total row here, you can just press tab and that's going to create a new blank row of data and you can fill in your data there. Also if I just go back to the design tab and get rid of my total row. The other thing about tables is if you are outside of the table, so this row here, I'm outside of the table now. If I start typing something here, so say I start adding some data, my table is going to absorb that new data. So you can see there that uh, I was outside of the table, but as I finished typing something, my table absorbed that data. It's the same thing with if I copy and paste something down here outside of the table it's now inside the table every table also comes with this little fill handle down here and that allows you to resize the table so if I click and drag that it's going to create more rows of data I can also click and drag that back to uh, remove those I can also create a new column that way or delete a column. And if I use that like this, then you can see that that's just removed this uh, set of figures from the table. I can put them back in there. And I can also uh, delete entire rows of data. So if I select the rows and right click and delete and delete rows, it's going to remove them. I can do the same thing with a column, so right click and delete and table columns. I'm going to want to undo that though because that's part of my data. If I also start typing right next to the table on the right hand side, that's going to absorb or be absorbed into the table, so it's going to create a new column. I'm just going to undo that. And the other thing you'll notice about tables, I'm just going to go down to the bottom here, is 
if I start typing a number, it goes into the table, but it also goes into the table with the formatting. So all these cells above were formatted as a currency. And when I added new data into an empty cell, even though it had no formatting, when it's absorbed into the table, it applies the formatting of the cells above it. So you don't have to worry about formatting your data every time you add new data to your table. When you're writing formulas in a table, so if I click here and type equals this, and let's just multiply that by two, what happens is the formula automatically copies down. So here, I've this is where I entered my monthly salary times two. But as you can see, it's been entered down the entire column for me without having to copy and paste it. When you're outside of your table, so maybe you're in another sheet even, it's easy to navigate to your table. So you can go up to this name box and your tables are gonna be listed in here. If you click on there, get back to your table. Also, you might have noticed when we were writing our formulas here, we didn't get the usual A1 type of referencing. What we got was what's called structured reference. So when you're creating formulas with a table, we get these structured references and it makes uh, reading formulas much easier. So if I type out sum and select this whole column here, so the whole monthly salary column. And if I'm just looking at this formula, equals sum HR data, monthly salary, I know exactly what it means right away. Versus if I just have something like this, I would have no idea what that means without looking to see what's in this range here. And these structured references are automatically created for you when you reference data inside your table. So, so you don't need to know how to type them out, but if you are typing them out, they do actually appear in the IntelliSense. So here you can see my table name so I can just tab and select that. And if I do a square bracket here, then I'm gonna get a list of all the columns available in that table. So here I can go and get my years at company and close it with a square bracket. And I get the reference for my HR data, years at company column. I'm just gonna press escape. Another thing is tables also work with slicers. So we do have our column headers with these filter toggles. So we can do some sorting and filtering here. But if you wanna add in a visual filter, we can go up to our table tools design tab and this button here for insert slicer gives us an option to choose which uh, filters we wanna add. So we can maybe add a couple here so let's take gender and job role. And we can move these guys up here. And now we have slicers that control our table. So we can filter our table with these slicer tools. So if I select just my females, you can see that uh, my table has been filtered on just my females. And I can come up to my job role slicer and maybe I just want to look at managers. So now I'm looking at female managers. So I'm just going to unfilter these or add everything back in. And the last thing is if you don't want your data to be in a table anymore, you can go up to the table tools design tab and use this convert to range option here. And Excel is going to ask you, do you want to convert this table to a normal range? If you press yes, the table is now a normal range. So the formatting has remained, but it is in fact not a table anymore. So 
you can tell it's not a table because I'm inside this area here and I don't see that table tools design tab anymore. The other telltale sign, if I scroll down, I don't have that resize handle down here. So that's it for Excel tables. They're basically containers for your data, but not only do they contain your data and tell Excel that all this data is one object, but they also have many, many, many other great little features that make them great to work with. So if you're not using tables already, I would definitely recommend start using tables. So that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.